Race is obviously going to be a big part of everyone's life in one way or another, but I gotta be honest, these people that choose to insert race into every single aspect of their existence have always rubbed me the wrong way. I don't date women who have sex with non-African men. Not only do I think basing your entire thought process off of something you have no control over is just inefficient and overall just kind of sad, but I find that having this kind of mindset leads to a lot of infantilization, hypocrisy, and eventually complete complete delusion. If you are an athlete, the way in which your worth is determined is identical to the way in which the worth of an enslaved African was determined. FD Signifier and Dr. Umar Johnson are two people who are very different, but definitely revert every single thing back to the white supremacist capitalistic system. Hip hop is an agent of white supremacy. So throughout this video, I'm gonna use them as examples to prove that viewing every single thing in your life through a racial lens can cause you to become a fucking insane person. So let's get started. Who the fuck are you, excuse me? FD Signifier is another one of my personal favorite social Socialist video essayists. You know the type. Incredibly smug, believes that all white people are inherently racist, not because of who they are as people or the decisions that they make, but because they take part in this system that is inherently racist. That system being capitalism or America or really whatever he wants to bitch about that day. You know, one of these people. Go, I'm um, a propagandist. Well, no, no, for the record. I'm, no, no, I'm not quoting I'm a propagandist. I'm just, no, no, I'm just saying. I'm gonna no, play I say, you. I'm saying I am. Okay. And for Dr. Umar Johnson, he's a. Uh, well, he's a lot. He's mostly famous for his like 15 spots on the Breakfast Club that all went viral, but he used to be a school psychologist and now he's like a Pan-African influencer slash speaker, I guess. And uh, his new mission in life is to create his own Pan-African private school. We're gonna check in to see how that's going, but yeah, that's what he talks about a lot. And I personally would say that a lot of his views are bat crazy. Everything we invented is a permanent patent for Africans, and if you want to use it, you must pay us a percentage. So guess what? Anybody running lights, you paying black people. In addition to that, America has about 10 major exports. Gold, oil, water, mm -hmm. electricity. We get a 25% cut permanently. But trust, we'll get into it throughout the video. Bow, 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 bow. In my opinion, one of the worst things that viewing everything through a racial lens leads to is the infantilization of you and your race. Just so you guys get where I'm coming from, my entire philosophy revolves around personal accountability. I believe that in America, the opportunity for success is always there, for the most part. Now, unfortunately, there are exceptions to that rule, and that's up. But if you're watching this video, let's be real. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about people like this guy. Your dad wasn't around at all or? Nah, he was in, he was in prison, girl. He was in prison. He went to prison for shooting my mom, girl. This guy's f***ed and that's wrong. But for most of us, the opportunity is there. And if you have an issue in your life, it is your responsibility to fix that issue. Not because the world is fair and magic is real, but because it's in your best interest. And to be clear, I think the government should help out more. But in my opinion, they've proven over and over and over again that they are incompetent. Uh, I don't remember. So this leaves us all with two options. Option one, try and improve your situation situation or option two don't try and have a life that is ass and you know what can make that garbage life even worse having your identity stolen. That's why I'm so happy to have Aura be the sponsor of today's video. Aura is an all-in-one easy to use solution that helps prevent digital threats from reaching you and your family. I understand this isn't a topic most of us think about all the time, but unfortunately, data breaches happen all the time. I mean, AT&T just had a data breach that affected 73 million of their customers. The first day I installed Aura, they found 17 security breaches with my passwords and a virus on my computer, and then proceeded to take care of all of that for me. See, Aura protects all your devices with a VPN, antivirus, plus a password management software. And it comes with a $1 million identity theft insurance policy. So worst come to worst, you got to check on the way. And because Aura is so gracious, if you use my link today, they will give you a two week free trial. So, you know, I mean, you're welcome. But seriously, one in four adults are affected by some sort of identity theft crime. So do yourself a solid and get that two week free trial started. All right. So thank you again to Aura for not only sponsoring today's video but for protecting the citizens of america now that we got that out of the way let's get back 
to the Uncle Ruckus show. I choose to think this way not only because it's what the most successful people have always done, but because it gives you the opportunity to change what you want to change in your life. A lot of people are constantly blaming some sort of boogeyman for the life being sh and I think even when that boogeyman is real and it is their fault, it's up to you to fix your life because no one is coming to save you, especially not anyone in this video. And things like learning about financial literacy or gaining a skill that's actually valuable in the market and the economy are great ways to immediately improve the quality of your life. But of course, some people are going to disagree with that objectively true and very obvious statement. The mythology of buying power has been used to convince poor black people that we're poor because of our own failures, our own inability to take advantage of the wonders that, that we have in terms of opportunity here in the United States. It's, it's a narrative that's meant to blame poor people for being poor. And to say, black people, you have all this buying power, and if you would just have financial literacy and stop buying rims and hair and weed, you would be rich and you could invest and buy land and buy stock and this and that. And then when you look at the numbers, there's no land to buy, there's no stock to buy, there's no wealth creating assets to invest in. There's no wealth building assets to buy in the United States of America? Really? What kind of loser ass mentality are you trying to instill in everybody's mind? You're actively telling people not to do things that will actually help them succeed in life. There is no world where if all black people started learning about money and investing where their lives would not dramatically improve. And if politics is your thing, that's beautiful, my friend. I just don't understand why you can't encourage people to do both. Why do you always have to prop one up by shutting down the other? I don't get that. Cause let's be real. What do you think is more applicable to a random black person's life? Hey, why don't you take these books and learn about financial literacy and saving or don't worry about making money and let's all galvanize and change the structure of the United States government. And that's the fundamental problem a lot of leftists have. We either fix the entire white supremacist patriarchal system or we do literally nothing. Nothing. And look, if Dr. Ball here is talking about black people as a group and not as individuals, I'm sure we would all agree that there's not some singular investment that can save an entire race. But to act as if there's no way for black people to succeed under capitalism, I think is just disingenuous. It's become obvious to me that these are people who've become so zeroed into an ideology that they forgot their most important goal, to improve the lives of as many people as possible. And I'm sorry, I'm gonna be a little bit of a Candace Owens here for a second. Yes, black people do spend money on a lot of stupid shit. I know a guy who is a delivery driver for Domino's Pizzeria and drives a $50,000 charger. I know at least four black people who drive luxury cars and cannot pay their rent. We all know you are a cashier at a Vaughn supermarket. You're not fooling anybody. Police stop. These are terrible life decisions. Obviously, it's not all of us, but let's be real, it's a lot of us. And if we stop spending on things that signal we have money, and took the time to learn how to make real money, our lives would dramatically improve. And that should not be a polarizing statement. But not only is telling black people to save their money wrong, but saying that we need to look presentable when we go to the grocery store is also anti-black. The double agent is an insidious figure among black conservatives because in many ways they have all the outward appearances of caring about black people and even some earn credibility for their work. But somewhere along the way, they begin to spout anti-black talking points that sound a lot like your typical conservative white person. But because they have this credibility, we don't recognize the harm in their words. So along with Cosby and Charleston White, we have Monique with her anti-bonnet crusade a couple of years ago. Huh. An anti-bonnet crusade. Now that sounds pretty darn intense. <laughs> I wonder what this agent of white supremacy actually said. But I saw so many of our young sisters in head bonnets, scarves, slippers, pajamas, blankets wrapped around them, and this is how they're showing up to the airport. And it I've been seeing it, not just at the airport, I've been seeing it at the store, at the mall. I've been seeing sisters showing up with these bonnets and headscarves and these slippers. And the question that I'm having to you, my sweet babies, when did we lose pride in representing ourselves? When did we step away of let me make sure I'm presentable when I leave my home? I can't believe this piece of shit, member of the black 
bourgeoisie would ask the descendants of slaves to brush their hair and put on pants before going to the grocery store? Doesn't this heifer realize how hard it is to brush my hair with the boot of white capitalism constantly on my neck, weighing me down? What's wrong with this bitch? E yeah, I'm sorry. If you took offense to anything Monique said, you're a loser. Like you never had your grandma tell you to look presentable when you go outside. Like who are these losers that are crying on the internet about this milk toast statement. This has you stressed out, really? That an old black lady's like, yeah, we should dress up when we go to the store. You're like, oh my God, how could she say this? Oh my God, she's so anti-black. Like, what, so laziness is just embedded in blackness? Is that what we're saying? Black people aren't allowed to want to look good <laughs> when we go outside? Like, having pride in your appearance is, is a Republican white thing now? Like, what are we talking about? Dramatic as hell for no reason. If you don't think that people are gonna judge you based on your appearance, you live in a f***ing fantasy world and you should never ever be able to operate a motor vehicle or use the internet without supervision. I don't know how we've become so fragile as a race where now telling grown adults to get dressed before going to the grocery store is now anti-black. Like, are we that weak? Are we that frail as a people? Like, what are we actually expected to do? Are we expected to feed ourselves, wipe our own asses, get to work on time? Like, what what isn't connected to the white supremacist capitalistic system? What 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 can we handle that isn't the fault of that? Y'all niggas bow, can't bow, handle y'all shit. Bow, bow. Black people, I know things are tough right now, all right? But don't worry, everything is about to change for us because Dr. Umar is going to start a school for kids on on purpose. <laughs> now you're actually trying to own your own school or buy yes, your build, own school? Like yes, explain sir. that to me. The uh, Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy um, is a school that I conceived of a very long time ago, but began to actually put teeth into the creation of that school a couple of years ago. Now you want the school to be strictly African in terms of overall its focus? Yes, the, 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 the concept, the foundation, will be Pan-African nationalism and the principles of African culture. Okay, he's creating a Pan-African private school. That sounds like an admirable goal. I just wonder how he's going to pay for all this. Donations, donations, gifts, gifts. Got it. Now he did start taking donations for this school 10 years ago, but I'm sure things are going great. I mean, look at all these classes he's offering to the kids. What is the curriculum gonna look like? We, our, in addition to your required math, science, language, and social studies, we're gonna have financial and economic science. Mm -hmm. Critical, how to do your own taxes, real estate, international investments, business planning. We got financial, economic, we have dietary and nutritional, how to eat to live, a lot of your doctor saving type child, of information, how to, be children, how to take care of your woman, how, how, how to raise your children, children, how to be a leader in the community. And of course, there will be military and political science, if I didn't mention that. We do want to teach them survival skills, traditional African martial arts, both with and without weapons. This seems so unbelievably realistic and not like a bunch of bullshit and lies. But again, where is the school at today? It's been 10 years and I want to see all these little T'Challa's this man is constantly producing. I'm excited. <laughs> Let's check it out. You suck, nigga. And it gets worse because he bought this building five years ago and there's still holes in the ceiling. The plumbing doesn't even work. He has taught zero children, produced zero mini T'Challas. How you can be this incompetent and have your fan base not completely turn on you is almost admirable, almost. Do you know who Umar, I'm gonna stop calling him doctor, Umar blames for this decade of failure? You, black people, unless you're not black, then just black people. <laughs> I'm gracious, but I'm not content. Cause I know y'all got a lot more to give me than some $250,000. Nigga, please. So what's been going on the past three and a half years? getting contractors who you can trust to help you with it. And contractors were not kind to us, man. They ripped us off, they scammed us, Con. they stole out the building. So I said, let's go with some white folks. And guess what? Here we are 90 days later 
And the white contractors have gotten us to the finish line mm. in three months mm-hmm, mm-hmm. versus three years mm. waiting on our own people. What you darkies couldn't accomplish in three years, the white man accomplished in three months. In class, what does that tell us? Black people are incompetent. It's almost poetic how somebody whose entire ideology is black brotherhood and all this sh- immediately throws black people under the bus as soon as it's time for him to address his own monumental failures. Y'all niggas are bow, 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 crazy. Bow, bow, bow. Another downside of viewing everything from a racial lens is that it causes you to have brain rot. And when you have brain rot, you say dumb shit like this. If you have an option between sending your kids to a mediocre black school or the highest achieving white school in the state, the mediocre black school is where you should send your black child. When I first heard this, I thought it sounded f***ing insane. And to be clear, I still think this is terrible advice. But if I'm being honest, I get where he's coming from here. Being the only other in terms of race can be a lot, especially on a kid. I wasn't the only black kid in my middle school, but there definitely weren't a lot of us. And I remember one time we were watching a movie and this kid was microwaving a baked chicken. It wasn't even fried. And the entire class turned and looked at me. To be real, it wasn't the entire class. It was probably like seven people, but it was still enough where the teacher was like, all right, all right, calm down. We all know this black kid loves chicken, but let's get back to watching the movie. I bring that story up to say, when you're the only black kid or the only Asian kid or the only whatever in a class of whatever, you're going to have to deal with a lot of stuff like that. But my suggestion would be to teach people how to treat you. If people are talking crazy to you, you talk crazy back. And if people come to you with some BS, you check them until the point where they have to respect you. I know for a fact that growing up in an environment like that helped me to be become funnier and cause me to gain thick skin. Two things that have really helped me out in life. So as someone who went through what he's talking about, don't let anything or anyone stop you from getting the best education possible. These are the types of decisions that completely change the trajectory, big words, of your life. Can't let that shit just slide by because you're uncomfortable, that's insane. You have to chase being uncomfortable sometimes. Then you watch the Miles Morales movie? Like, come on, bro, where, where were you at? It is better for your children to not be the only black person that they know. And quick, type, type F in the chat if you were the only black person. Is it F? Should I say F? Whatever, type F in the chat if you had that only black person experience and it sucks and you'd have traded it in for the hood any day. Not the hood, you get my point. I'm not gonna act like the whole Carlton syndrome isn't a real thing, but if that's something you're worried about, you don't have to sacrifice your child's education. You can put them around black people in other ways. Join a youth group, go to church, put them around your black family. I just came up with that in like four seconds. But of course FD couldn't leave it there. He then goes on to talk about how he almost quit YouTube because he's black. I was thinking about quitting because I wasn't sure if I was okay with the unintended consequences of my success. The fact is, if you're black and successful, that means you're probably finding that your peers and the people around you are starting to look less and less like you. This is the definition of self-destructive behavior. Let me just throw away this amazing career that I've been working on for years because my peers are becoming less black. Ew. This is YouTube, so you get to choose who your peers are. No one is forcing you to make videos with Super Eye Patch Wolf in your mom's basement. If you want every FD signifier video to have the racial diversity of a Tyler Perry movie, no one is stopping you from doing that. And number two, call me a coon but I don't think your peers becoming less and less black is necessarily a bad thing. Hear me out. It makes sense that when you really zero in and become successful at something, that people of all different races are gonna start popping up in your life. And the reality that these racially obsessed people don't wanna admit is that you're probably gonna have a lot more in common with those people than the average person that kinda looks like you. I don't think that makes you a sellout or a coon. Now there's definitely a way to do it to be a sellout and a coon, but just because people start coming into your life that you connect with more, I don't think that necessarily makes you a bad person. Especially if it's not intentionally like, oh, I'm tired of these broke ass blacks. Let me get with the white man. It's like, no, maybe you just kind of like this guy more. He's super similar to you because you both dedicated your life to the same thing. So of course you're going to have similar interests. That just makes sense. Doesn't necessarily have to be a racial thing, but I feel like you're just kind of making this weird for no reason. 
Sorry to break it to Mr. FD Signifier, but you have way more in common with the Noah Samson than you do with the average black person. You have the exact same political ideology. You both make YouTube video essays that make me want to self-harm. You beef with the same people and you're both incredibly unlikable. You're twinsies in all the ways that matter. So why would you be mad at gravitating to somebody you're way more similar to? Isn't that what human nature is all about? And just because you made it doesn't mean you have to turn your back on your community or the people you came up with. Why can't you just use your platform and your money to help up, bring people up with you instead of self-destructing like some self-hating loser ass anime protagonist and suddenly you're managing how you're perceived and how said perception might affect your future opportunities but also you're in negotiation with how you continue to try to relate to the black spaces that you still reside in and how those spaces might perceive you as you constantly go in and out of that space to travail through white spaces. You might wonder, are you being rewarded for your talent and hard work or tokenized for your ability to go along and get along and not rock the boat too much? Is your success the fruit of your labor or the benefits for allowing yourself to be exploited? Exploited? Exploited by who? The YouTube algorithm? I'm assuming he's talking about his white audience, but again, that's the great thing about YouTube. You get to pick who your audience is. So if you're tired of bending the knee to the white man or whatever bullshit, you have in your head you can just create content that caters to an all-black audience there you go problem solved like what is this weak backwards ass way of thinking that these people always have i really think viewing everything from this sort of lens gives you that weak ass mindset but as unacceptable as that was dr umar of course has found a way to top him white culture is based on military science that's how they've been so successful White culture is totally based on military science. They never drop their guard around black folks, but they love to make black people think the guard had been dropped. Bill Cosby, perfect example. Look at all those white girls. He was taking care of them, giving them money, looking out for them. He thought that when they were behind closed doors, it was just about him and her. Not at all. She is always an agent of white supremacy, even when you between her legs. Imagine being so f crazy that your plan to show white people as these deceptive sociopaths is to bring up Bill Cosby's 100 r and have Bill Cosby the r as the victim to these white women that he r Bill was just being his loving and attentive self and these white snow bunny demons just decided to switch up on him for what a little bit of r <laughs> what's your problem bitch? and this guy's supposed to be a psychologist Remember that. Rule number one, all white people are racist. I didn't say you gotta mistreat them. I didn't say you gotta hate them. You gotta understand them. That's all brothers and sisters. When you see a pit bull dog, do you hate the pit bull? No, but you know that pit bull got some tendencies that you don't necessarily wanna evoke. So you keep your distance from the pit bull. You don't hate the pit bull. I love snakes. I love snakes, but guess what? I know snakes got certain types of natural tendencies that I don't necessarily want to find myself on the wrong side of, so I keep my distance from the snakes. So I'm not telling you to hate white folks. I don't teach hate. I'm telling you to understand your enemy and know when your behavior needs to be adjusted so that you don't fall victim to the enemy. That's what I teach. This is literally red pill ideology, except the common enemy is white people instead of women. I don't hate women. They're just these sociopathic demons that'll leave you and your family as soon as they have the opportunity to slightly upgrade their life. But I mean, <laughs> there's no, there's no ill will. I would never. Me? When I'm talking, shut the fuck up. All right? Like, I'm not one of your exes, one of these loser boyfriends you had before that let you talk over them. Shut the fuck up when I'm talking. Yeah, I wrote a book called Why Women Deserve Less, but I don't hate women. This is just their nature. It's not their fault they're pieces of shit or i don't hate white people i mean they are evil sociopaths who will take from you in every single way humanly possible but i mean i don't hate them that's just their nature <laughs> pit bull remember the next time a white person tells you that they are not a racist your next question should be what have you done to do away with the white privilege that you live off how did you get rid of your white privilege how? 
Honestly, what's the correct way for a white person to answer that question? Well, golly gee, Kamal, I do understand that my white privilege sure is immense. That's why I'm currently taking a course on how I can become a better ally to my Afro-American brethren. <laughs> it's a good thing that's a joke I just made up and not a real thing that FD Signifier unironically promoted on his YouTube channel. Thank God we don't live in that dystopian world. I'm very pleased to announce that my first ever sponsor on this channel is not Raid Shadow Legend but an organization that really aligns with much of what I want this channel to be. And that is an organization called Uplifting Impact, a black owned and woman led diversity and inclusion organization trying to engage in important conversations and actions that seek to shift power to marginalized communities of all forms. One way that they do this is through their three day virtual summit, How to Be an Ally. It's an event for people who want to learn a positive, healthy framework for diversity, equity, and inclusion related allyship. Black people are literally anyone. Imagine if your friend came up to you and said that they spent $200 on a three day internet summit on how to become a better ally to your race. Would that strengthen your relationship with that person or would it destroy your relationship with that person? I know my answer, but I'd love to hear from you guys down below. You spent $200 on a class on how to be cool with black people? That's weird. That tells me you're incredibly uncomfortable around black people. If you tell me that you're about to do some investing with a white man, I can tell you that at some point in that relationship, unless you are extremely careful and you can never be too careful because they control the entire legal apparatus. The entire legal apparatus. Got it. At some point, you're going to get manipulated out of your holdings because white people don't share power with black folks. You are out of your African mind if you think you're going to enter into a lifelong partnership with a white person. All these pieces of shit, fresh and fed, Fox News, Hassan, Mr. Umar, they all do the same thing. First, create a common enemy that your audience already isn't really feeling like. You demonize and dehumanize them constantly, tell lies about that common enemy, making your audience even more anxious, hateful, or fearful, leaving them to go to you for constant answers and updates about how to get rid of this awful feeling that you have created. It's the same formula over and over and over again. I don't know how people don't catch on. Well, actually I do, because these sociopaths just leverage people's emotions and tell them what they want to hear so that they can keep making money off of them. That's why we live in a world where a grown adult men take dating advice from Fresh Prince CEO. What percentage of college women do you think are being flown around the world? To f I want to hear from all if three I had to argue, I want to hear. Off of like probability wise, if I had to argue, maybe like 30, 40, 50. Holy you know, that's a video for another day. Now, clearly, Umar has a problem with the whites, but when it comes to white women, this guy really gets unhinged. Let me ask you a question, Dr. Umar. Are you totally against interracial relationships? I am totally against it, and I want to make sure you understand why. I would argue the reason black men marry white women is because they wish they were white themselves, and having the white man's prize, his queen, is a psychological symbol to myself that I am equal to him. So you can't be in love with white women and not at the same time feel inferior to white male. Black men can only date the white women that white men do not know. I think it goes without saying, I think that it is stupid. I will agree, there's a lot of people who are out here idolizing and fetishizing other races because they have no self-worth. Anytime I see a black dude or anyone from any race really that's like, uh-oh, snow bunny season, <laughs> where's my white queen at? Or uh-oh, <laughs> looks like I got that yellow fever, I'm trying to find me a Mikasa sign. Where's my waifu? That is troglodyte behavior. You're no longer a part of the functioning society. You need to step on over to the gulag and get to work. That person is a loser, but I realize that not every single person who's in an interracial relationship is that guy. But Umar disagrees. Dr. Umar, my brother loves white women. How can I redeem him? Don't redeem him. Release him to the bunny brigade. Don't save the snow bunny lover. 
Sure, he took like $5 million in donations and there's no school and spent 10 years, but I mean, look at you dating a Mexican. What are you, trying to destroy black people forever? Why don't you just reincarnate MLK and f Tucker Carlson is autistic. Why don't you just do that? But my question to Mr. Umar is, if marrying a Korean girl is gonna destroy the fabric of the black community, how is marrying Sukiyana, the human minstrel show, even on the table? So could you make Sukiyana a wifey? You talk about that as well too, uh, man. I, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, she and I had never spoke. Uh, she obviously would have to make some radical transformations. You mm. know, I have a lot of young people who look up to me all over the world, African mm. children, teenagers, elementary school, middle school. I have more young followers than any other black personality in the world. This man really just said unironically that he has more fans than any other black personality in the world. We're just, we're just letting that slide. Zero pushback on that statement, right? Okay. And I'm very responsible towards them. And, you know, for me to come out with her, she would have to renounce nearly everything she does and mm. reinvent herself. Uh, I don't think she's at that point right now. When she gets to that point, if I'm still available, meaning I don't have my two wives yet, then we can have that conversation at that time. Those of you who are blessed enough to not know what a Sukiyana is, let me fill you in. Sukiyana is an OnlyFans hell spawn sent here to destroy humanity by making the worst entertainment possible. She is a rapper, but doesn't know what the word musician means. You're a musician. But that's why I'm interviewing you today, so I can get to know you. So I'm a musician. Mm -hmm. What the fuck that mean? Make magic or something? What is musician? I think that's, I think you're confusing that. Yeah, I'm not no musician. I, I make music. And she says she loves black people, but she has a video with Sexy Red of both of them twerking, eating fried chicken in front of a Popeyes, talking about sucking green and their baby daddies killing people. I'm very pro-black, so I care about my people. So I care about my people. Yeah, I'm not no musician. I make music. I care about my people. I guess I'm just a little bit confused on why she has potential, but all interracial relationships doomed from the start. It just feels a little odd to me. You better finish strong or I'ma get in that ass. When it comes to wrapping up this video, I wanna focus on two things. First, the people. For Mr. FD Signifier, I do think he's incredibly smug, arrogant, dramatic, and kinda weaselly. But I also think he's incredibly knowledgeable, passionate, and that he genuinely does care about black people and black issues. And I wanna say I really have learned a lot from watching his videos and that I genuinely wanna thank him for that. For realsies. No sarcasm. Now for Dr. Umar, let's start off with the nice stuff because it's gonna be mostly negative. He did get his doctorate. That is impressive. We have to give him credit for that. Even though the doctor in the cult did say that it is the easiest doctorate to get, we have to give him credit. And I genuinely do think it's a good thing that he's drawing attention to how easily these kids are being prescribed pharmaceutical drugs. So, you know, kudos and shit. On the other hand, Mr. Umar clearly has serious issues with the whites. The dating standards are insane. The Bill Cosby stuff is insane. And obviously I think the school is a scam. Because even if the school does open, in my humble opinion, there's no way that someone who's been taking donations donations for 10 years and has taught zero children, said the school would be up and functioning by 2019 at the latest and five years later doesn't even have a working bathroom. Someone who when confronted about why after 10 years nothing has really been done, immediately shifts the blame to the community he said he's here to help. I just don't think that person is capable of running a private school. Call me crazy. Now that we got those two out of the way, let's talk about why I think it's bad to view everything through this racial lens. I'm not making this video to say that racism is dead or anything like that. But if I'm being honest, I do think we focus on race a little too much. The truth is when it comes to experiencing racism in modern times, you don't know. Was that person being shitty because they're an asshole or were they being shitty because they hate black people? Most of the time, it's impossible to tell. Back in the day, it was very obvious. A while back, my my grandma told me a story when she was walking to work with her white friend and some lady threw boiling water at her and called her the hard R. And that was in the 80s. But now we're at a point where like yesterday, for example, two of my coworkers were convinced this lady was racist because they tried to take a plate of food off of her table and she just kind of put her hand down and said no. And our manager, who is black, was like, well, she was sitting with a black guy and they're like, so that doesn't mean anything. And I'm like, Really? You think know, you're kind of jumping to conclusions here? The reality of the situation is this lady sucks. Those are the facts. Or at least she did a thing 
that made her shitty in my eyes. That's all you really know. But when you're like, oh, she's racist, she's this, she's sexist, she's you're just guessing. Now you're all emotional off of information that you don't even really have. She doesn't care. She's moved on. She's still able to eat her little baked chicken or whatever was on her stupid ass plate. You're the one that's in the back all upset because you feel like you went through some racist traumatic experience. When you probably didn't. The reality is that someone did a thing to you that you didn't like and you jump to a conclusion that you've been conditioned to jump to. And all I'm saying is that jumping to that conclusion for every issue you have is gonna do nothing for you but drive you crazy and make you miserable. And to be crystal clear, I'm not saying that when something inherently racist does happen that you need to just take it with a smile because you can never offend the white man. Stand up for yourself because those people 100% but let's stop making every single issue something or someone else's fault because I guarantee you you'll be the only one to suffer